Mohammed Yusuf Abdulaziz killed four Marines and injured several others, is a naturalized U.S. citizen from Kuwait. Four United States Marines were murdered Thursday. Our Boston station WBZ identifies one of them as Gunnery Sergeant Thomas Sullivan of Springfield, Massachusetts. What would motivate someone to go on a killing spree? Right now, the motive is still unknown. And it remains unknown. There's some coverage of yesterday's horrific shooting in Chattanooga, Tennessee. Brought, uh, the shooting itself brought about a lot of questions mm -hmm. about whether that attack was affiliated with international terror groups or whether or not it was a lone wolf attack. That's where we'll start today's roundtable. Joining us, co-host of The Daily Wrap, Rick Unger, and Newsmax contributor Kevin Broderick. Thanks for being with us, gentlemen. Uh, and as we look at this, a lot of folks already tossing around blame. How was this not prevented? But at this point, Rick, it seems to me premature to blame anyone other than the shooter. No, you're absolutely right. It, it always makes me a little bit crazy when they start with the blame thing so early when there's so much we yet to find out. Look, we've got four Marines who passed away yesterday. We owe their families a lot more than playing the blame game. We need to find out why this happened. You know, we certainly all have our, our guesses and we see things that lead us in a certain direction. But <clears throat> let the uh, authorities do their job and there'll be lots of time to talk about was there something more we could have done. Obviously, I think we can all agree at least that this should not have happened. But Kevin, when you see folks throwing around the blame so much, what do you think that says to you about the frustration with the situation uh, and these shootings in this country? Well, it's unfortunate because it looks like, uh, you know, there's a rise of ISIS in the Middle East. And you can point to a few different things with our Middle East policy showing ISIS gaining strength that might be emboldening some uh, local lone wolf terrorists to say, well, the U.S. has been weakened, red lines have been drawn, they've been walked over. Uh, maybe I can sort of make, make my mark now because I'll have uh, more of an opportunity to do so. And... Uh, and there'll be sort of a, a, an opportunity to look at this and say, well, why, why won't I do this for the, for the, the sake of Allah? Um, and, you know, unfortunately, you know, it's a mental illness issue uh, on top of all of that uh, to go along with the radical uh, Islamic issue. And uh, I do think we need, you know, it to be called what it is, which is radical Islamic terrorism, which uh, a lot of times this administration if, if doesn't do. If that's what it turns out to be. If, yeah, you know, if we, that's what it turns out to right. be. The investigation. All, all signs are pointing that way based on this person's activity. I, I don't disagree. Right. But the I, I don't disagree. Is not I just, I, well, you yeah, know, and I think you owe it to the Marines to keep that open until we know. Certainly. Absolutely. And Certainly. thoughts and prayers, obviously, with those who lost lives and those who are injured. And that is also the case as well as, as the uh, more of the victims now are being identified here today. Let's play a clip. Also, Donald Trump on Fox News last night. Uh, let's listen to what he had to say. These are four great Marines from what everybody tells me, unbelievable people, and that they're not allowed to carry guns is absolutely ridiculous. So what happens is this guy walks in, he's got a gun, they're just sitting there as targets. It's absolutely disgraceful. Uh, disgraceful, that's one way of describing it, but that's part and parcel of this uh, rush to have some sort of answer in this case. I think, you know, Donald right. Trump, you know, a lot of the discussion about the safe zones, um, <clears throat> but I think it goes deeper than that. Would you agree, Rick? Yeah, you know, it's, look, here, let, let's, let's do a little reality check here. You and I know there are a great many little towns and cities around the country that are wholly dependent on military bases. Right. So if you drove a car down Main Street uh, at any time of the day, the odds are every single person you'd be driving by would be members of our military. Now, if somebody has it in their mind to take out an automatic or semi-automatic weapon and do something ghastly like what happened yesterday, you know, whether they're armed or not, you may be able to take him out before he gets too many, but you know, you're going to end up with, with a bad result. So we have to look at this a little bit differently. Uh, it's not as simple as Donald Trump would like us to believe it is. Or a lot of other was, folks as well. But it's not. Right. That's right. right. Let's uh, take a moment now, guys, and, and hear reaction from Navy veteran and Chattanooga resident Ashley Combs. Yesterday was a gut check. It wasn't something that we ever thought was ever going to happen in Chattanooga. You see it nationally and you never think that your town is going to make the national news. And more and more comments like these just continue to pour in and resonate with the nation still shaken by everything that's, ha that's happened. And obviously the question here is can anything be done to prevent future attacks? Trump mentioned uh, guns and we've heard a lot of people come out and say we should have more guns while others are suggesting fewer guns are the answer but my question to you kevin is whether either of these suggestions really help get to the root of the matter uh you might have been able 
prevent some of those lies uh, from, from being massacred. The reality is, if anyone's qualified to handle a, a firearm, it would be a Marine at a, at a base or anywhere you know, they were recruiting. So I don't think it's a terrible idea allowing Marines who are fully trained, fully qualified, to handle firearms that they know how to use. And these are our best and brightest as far as law enforcement go, the Marines. I think it makes perfect sense to make them uh, equipped with weapons to prevent these sort of shootings. I mean, look, the reality is there's only so much you can do when someone surprises yeah, you with a terrorist we can't attack. Live, we can't live right. in, in a jail cell if we want to be secure 100%. Correct. That's the reality we're looking at. Gentlemen, thanks for your insight on this. We're going to come right back after this commercial break. We're going to lighten it up a little bit. We're going to play one of our Friday favorites here at Newsmax now, Real or Fake. See if Rick can improve his score from last week. <laughs> Even though I was gone, Rick, I hear it was pretty dismal. Oh, Hopefully uh, you Stop. can rebound. We welcome you back to Newsmax. Now, earlier this week, Twitter shares soared briefly, popping more than 8% at one point. This course following a fake story circulating on Bloomberg News. That story reported that Twitter had received a $31 billion, $31 billion wow. buyout offer. Well, Bloomberg's was getting a little bit ahead of itself on this story. Mm -hmm. It turned out not to be real. They also put out this response, quote, please note that the Twitter story everyone is talking about is fake. The stock retreated and then closed up only at 2.6%. A lot of fake news circulating, circulating, circulating. <clears throat> Circulating the internet. There you go. I'm having a hard time here, uh, but of course that's why we play. It's you're just real so taken. Well, you're so taken back by the headline. Yes. You know what happened. But it's time for real or fake. We'll you guys ready? Sort through what's real and what's Rick, fake. Rick, you ready for a back comeback? Back with us, Rick Unger, Kevin Broder. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, I, I tried to send a check to Miranda to get the answers ahead of time, but she wasn't biting. <laughs> she, she will She's not. She's an honest, she will not bite. An honest is, anchor. Oh, there is, there is, there's some you. integrity, even though we laugh during this segment. There's some real integrity. A lot of hard work yeah. goes into this segment. <laughs> Go ahead, All right, Miranda. let's Take get soon. ready to rumble. I tried. Uh, today we have a very special real or fake. Uh, let's say it's predominantly animal headlines. Yes, we all know people that are obsessed with their pets. I don't know anyone like that. So much so that there is a demand for unusual pet products. I'm going to play ads from two companies that are offering unique pet Unique's products. A uh, Unique's a good word. And you have to guess which one is real and which one is fake. First up, uh, let's take a listen, shall we? My Dunker dog is really gush. I have to show my twinkle gush. Yes, yes, your eyes are not fooling you. Couldn't. What you see here is an ad for a cat uh, tush jewel. It wraps around the tail and blings on your pets, you know what. Okay, we can move on along now. Up next, we have this very special product. I'm I'm horrified by what I just saw. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to be scarred now. No matter what, uh, that video, that that video was real, no matter what. Yeah, you guys can think This is why we all went to journalism Christina school. Thank our producer, Christina, for that one, okay, yeah. by the way. Up, <laughs> up next, we have this very special product for a man's best friend, or woman's. In the wild, dogs share food together, play together, sleep together. The Hunstall Doggy High Chair simulates what naturally occurs in the wild, resulting in a balanced and a more happier animal. Yes, IKEA is now offering furniture for the modern dog, a doggy high chair that allows them to eat with you at the table and avoid having a mess on the floor. Look at that tail wag. So, uh, Rick, I'm going to start with you. Cat jewels, real or fake? This is, this is why we all wanted to be journalists when we grew up, right? Right. Yes. Um, exactly. I think, you dreamt of this I think, moment. I think, the, I think the jewels one is the real one. Okay. Okay. It's, and what do you say, Kevin? And, uh, I, well, full disclosure, I think I saw the uh, bedazzled butt <laughs> in my Facebook feed. So I'm going to say that that one's real. But I'll also say that the, uh, I don't know if it's, it's an either or, but it seems as though Ikea would create a piece of furniture like that as well. So I would say real to both. I don't know and, if that's and allowed. And Rick, what do you think? Doggy well, dining I, table? I actually, I thought only... I thought only one of them was real, so you can't, I'm you can't predict. We always keep the Ikea. real or we, fake. We keep you guessing. We keep you guessing. What do you think? You, you, you could have lied. There you go. I think I think the the bejeweled is is real. I think IKEA is false. Okay. okay. Well, you're 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 partially right here. Uh, the hound stool is fake. It was part of an April Fool's oh. joke, but it did originate from IKEA. So hats off to them for some clever marketing. But it definitely fooled a lot of people. Now the interesting thing about uh, the cat tush jewels is that it started out as just a joke of course 
the internet, as Kevin mentioned, can do certain things to certain things, and now this is a real thing that you can actually purchase online for five well, then dollars. How am I half wrong? I got them both right. There you go. Yeah. Rick was uh, the winner. Yeah. Wow, that's just uh, disturbing, isn't it? I okay, move points, on along. Man. All right, now we got to go to we got to go to the lightning round because okay. we use so much time on that. Caribbean island cracks down right. on alcoholic monkeys. The island passed the legislation requiring all alcoholic beverages to be covered mostly because of the enormous number of alcoholic monkeys on the island. Kevin, real or fake? Uh, I'm going to have to go with fake. I know I've seen monkeys smoking cigarettes, but to say that there's some sort of national policy about monkeys uh, needing AA, I, I, maybe it's just a little bit too much of a stretch. So right, fake for Kevin. Rick, what do you say? I'm going with true. All right. Okay. Well, there, believe it or not, there is an island in the Caribbean where alcoholic monkeys are taking over the beach. Uh, but this is fake. The island is not cracking down on it. They just let the monkeys be. You and set me up. We, we always video. do, Rick. We it's always do. amazing video. Thought from I had a right. Roll the drunk monkeys video. From BBC. Look at that. <laughs> Now, the story itself is, is about the drunk monkeys is real, as brought to you by the BBC. Now, we got time for one more, guys. The next one is also somewhat animal-related, but an insect this time. Now, in Russia, women compete to be bitten by mosquitoes in the most delicious girl competition, which is judged based on how many mosquito bites you receive. R lightning round again. Rick, real or fake? True. True. Kevin, what do you say? Uh, I'll agree. True. All right. This one is real. And that festival begins today in a small Russian town. So, Marina, what do we got? So we have the final score here. Is Kevin? Kevin, you win by one. Congratulations. Great. What? Oh, sorry, Rick. You have to try yeah, again. Rick, you were next so week. close. Happened. You were so close. So close. You'll get okay. it next time. Guys, thanks. I, got for, I, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> thanks for I'll being good it. sports, and you can catch Rick coming up right after us on the Daily Wrap today. Thanks so much, guys.